A very warm welcome dear students. Uh, today we are going to discuss business policy and strategy that comes under your BBA course in semester 5. I am Dr. Hori Nadir, Assistant Professor, School of Management, BBT University, Lucknow. So as we see the uh, definition of business policy, policy is basically refers to a set of management decisions oriented towards enhancing and sustaining the firm competitive advantage based on a system of intrinsic and extrinsic values. Or we can say business policy is the study and responsibilities of top level management. So here the top level is involved in making the policies and with the significant issues affecting organizational success and the decisions affecting organization in long terms. It is a type of standing plan or we can say that we are making everything in black and white and we are chalking out the plans to work upon in a future direction. Coming to the types of policies, we have different types of policies starting from HR policies. So HR is interested with hiring and firing, training, transfer incentive and maintaining organizational culture when we are talking about marketing policies so marketing policies what to sell then who is your customer then what product mix or the marketing mix we are going to try for a particular product or the service then the promotions and advertising decisions are being taken by marketing policy. They are taken care of marketing people. Coming to the quality policy, quality is every uh, organization is having a particular quality control unit. They are interested with checking the standards and they are keeping a close check and the control over production or the logistics or the inventory control so on and so forth then they are getting the feedback from outside world and they are doing the collective measures as far as these quality concerns are limited as you see the nature of business policy we have different horizons in the nature of business policy these are more of like objective because they are simply a guidelines and they are chalked out in a framework manner then we have relationship to other objectivity then complementariness stability and flexibility Fairness and honesty, bring known, understand and accept it. Policy should be in writing. This is very important because the policy is written uh, for the purpose of unambiguity and it is spoken to everyone in a same manner. Simple and free from ambiguity, there is no confusion at all in a policy. Then supplementary to other policies, whenever we are making a business policy, this is uh, supplementary to the other policy already made. Then comprehensiveness. It should be comprehensive. It covers all the areas. Then consistent with public policy. Whatever the public policy undergoing in the organization or in the particular scenario, we have to abide by those public policies then it should go in with the ethical standards. Now coming to the elements of business policy, we have different elements like starting from ascertaining the problem. First of all, we have to find the problem. Then after finding the problem, we are going to formulate the policy to cure that particular problem. Then we are having the dissemination of policy. We are going to tell everybody about the policy in the organization. Then the acceptance of policy. After telling the policy, all are getting ready to accept that particular policy. So that is called acceptance of the policy. Then we are going to explain the policy in a comprehensive manner. Then the policy will be implemented. And after that, a feedback or a follow-up is formed that is called quality 
control or the policy control how we are going to control the policy through appraisal or through feedback process so now as far as objectives of the policy business policy are concerned so this is relating to the organizational work then it facilitates predetermined objective already settled objective or already um, already established objective we are going to make policy for that those particular objectives then linkages between physical and personal so whenever there is a, a linkage between organizational culture or organizational people or where there is a linkage between product and services to the product and service provider so this is the connecting link between uh, like physical and personal uh, things now helpful to the authorities whenever authorities are going to conduct uh, some appraisal sort of a thing business policy always be helpful providing communication for better communication in the organization uh, business policy plays a vital role then describe the job whenever a new employee comes in to the organization or joins in the organization uh, a descriptive job is assigned to him or her according to his ability and capabilities now as far as the classification of business policy is concerned there are different types of classification we have in business policy number 1 the policy based on nature of origin so that is originated policy the orig original policy then we have appealed policy then we have imposed policy second classification is based on functions that is personal policies marketing policy finance policy and production policies these are based on functional departments then we have uh, the classification on the basis of expression expression as in either it is written or oral or implied neither written nor oral but uh, people are understanding that particular policy now as a matter of fact we have different types of uh, policy classification the other one is based on level of organization we know that we uh, have divided the organization on the basis of uh, levels either it is top level or middle level and operating level or the functional level we are going to assign the policy or we are going to draft the policy for each and every level then we have policies based on situations in the normal situations we have normal policy in the difficult situation we are going to uh, frame a contingency policy in uh, some times of problems we are going to uh, have some administrative policies then departmental or minor policies now coming to the fifth one that is based on scope of organization so whenever we are talking about the scope of organizations we have three different types of policy in hand number one is basic policy so this is the basis of any organization then we have general policy general for all the employees then we have specific policy according to the grades and according to the levels according to the uh, management according to the job assigned to a particular person now whenever we are talking about the mechanism of policy making we have different steps or we are going to find the steps in policy making like first one is identification of situation whenever there is a difficult situation we are going to frame a policy for that particular situation then second comes or the second step in policy making is development of the policy we are going to develop a policy or the top level management is all, always interested to uh, develop and draft a policy then we are going to disseminate the policy as a top level managers they are going to tell everyone about the policy so this is the dissemination of information then coming to the explanation uh, if there is some difficulty in understanding by the employees then there is the duty of top level management to explain the policy then the acceptance comes whenever the acceptance comes people uh, are going to accept that particular policy and then the feedback will be given to 
the top level management that how it is implemented now coming to the importance of business policy so there are certain importances we uh, add to business policy number one is solving business problems whenever there is a problem in the organization we are going to frame the policy to sort out that particular problem then it is going to provide stability to the organization because because it is comprehensive it is open to all it is sort of a general thing so people are getting uh, like benefit out of it then it helps manager to improve their managerial powers so whenever there are managers they are going to hone their skills they are going to upskill themselves through uh, powers uh, they are getting then help in administration whenever there is a, a administrative issue or there is uh rule, there are the rules regulation people have to be abide by those rules and regulation inside the organization then we are going to optimize the scarce resources optimum utilization as in to the maximum utilization of available resources then we are going to ensure the consistency it should be the policy should be consistent enough to deal with the present scenario then the policy should be advanced enough to build up the goodwill in the eyes of consumer in the eyes of vendors in the eyes of channel partners or anybody connected to the organization at all now let's talk about the limitations of business policies so whenever we are talking about the limitation of business policy it covers only a limited area because whenever we are framing a policy it is for a particular firm or industry or uh, an organization so it is uh, covering a smaller area then the policies are static by nature then consistencies in policy they are constant by nature then they are Uh, acquiring the limited area again then policies are not end policies like uh, policies are working whenever there is a new scenario comes in we are going to uh, change the policy or we are going to <clears throat> enhance our policy or we are going to frame another policy for that particular reason then policy provide only a set of rules so this is not going to tell you that how to face a problem or how to troubleshoot your problem but this is only providing you the framework in black and white that Uh, or the set of rules in the organization now we see the uh, difference between policies and procedures number 1 policy is a guide for thinking and action but as far as procedures are concerned procedures are guide for action they show the method of doing a task second policies are basis for procedures then the procedures follow the policy so policies are responsibilities of top level management and the procedures are responsibility of middle and lower level those who are doing the work in the first place that is the responsibility of procedure is interested on them only policies are always stable but procedures can change in short run in the shorter span of time procedures can change policies give emphasis on general approach by procedures give emphasis on stage by stage details policies are broad and comprehensive they cover all the areas in the organization rather procedures are more rigid and allows no freedom then policies are applied in long range planning and procedures are applied in a short range planning policies are directly related to goals and procedures are indirectly related to goals policies does not provide any method of doing a work and uh, procedures is a standard method of doing a work now coming to a very important topic that is called strategy the second part of our paper so uh, the strategy is derived from the greek word strategos uh, which means general ship the actual direction of the military force it is coming from the military forces so the strategy is divide, defined as the determination of the basic long term objective and goals of the organization the formulation of plans and the acquisition allocation and utilization of resources necessary to accomplish these goals 
So a strategy is the linkage between a business. These are the different definitions given by different behavioral scientists. And so given the definition that says strategy is a common thread among the organization activities and product market that defines the essential nature of business that the organization was planned to be in future. Whenever we are planning something for the future, so this is the thread between organization activity and the product market. Now, uh, Stainer said that strategy means deciding the basic mission of the company, the objective which it seeks to achieve and the policies governing the use of resources at the disposal of the firm to achieve its objectives. So here, uh, this definition is more of like a mission and the objective and the genesis of the company. We are going to abide by the rules and the regulations and the policies already uh, established ob objectives for a um, profit making organization. Now we have the nature of strategy as similar to the policy. So first one we are going to provide overall framework. Then unified direction. There is only one direction. Then contradictory action. There is no contradictory action in a unified direction then major course of action we are going to decide upon the major course of action these are strategies are uh, taken into consideration for long-term goals only then whenever we are making a grand plans or as we know that long-term goals are a grand plans on the first place so we are going to uh, make strategy but not the policy then the policy is the combination of action then it blends the external and internal factors whenever we are making a strategy it is for future course of action then it is comprehensive again whenever we are uh, making strategy we are going to acquire all the areas in the all the area, functional areas all the development areas or all the future directions in our strategy then it should be competitive and uh, it should be proactive it should work as a guide to the organization and it should be dependent on a system already provided or the culture of the organization now let's talk about dimensions of the strategy. Number one is strategy process. Number two is strategy context. Number three is strategy content. Whenever there is a process into consideration, so what is the process? It is the way a strategy is formulated, controlled and implemented. So how we are going to formulate the policy? Uh, sorry strategy and how we are going to control the strategy and the proper implementation of the strategy this is called the process then coming to the context whenever we are talking about the context it refers to the conditions when the process being executed whenever we are going to execute or formulate the process we are going to see the environmental conditions that uh, conditions are favorable or unfavorable then the third dimension is strategic content whenever we are talking about the content it is the outcome like the process earlier we formulate then we control then we implement in a particular condition controlled or non-controlled condition and after that we are going to see the outcome of that particular strategy so here we have the hierarchy of the strategy number one there is a corporate headquarter then we are going to have strategic business unit this is called SBUs then we are going to have a uh, functional units like uh, uh, manufacturing unit finance marketing uh, R&D and human resource so these are the basic three components or the three levels we can say that like corporate strategy business uh, strategy and functional strategies three type of strategies we are going to inculcate in a particular hierarchy now let's see how we are going to induce a particular strategy in a particular level so whenever we are uh, talking about the corporate level strategy it is the top level management 
plan run and direct the business as a whole whenever we are talking about a business level strategy or a middle level strategy we can say it is the managerial plan for directing and running a business unit then the third comes your functional level uh, strategy it denotes the operative divisions levels and departments in an organization such as marketing finance hr etc so whenever we are having a working department or the floor manager they are going to follow the functional level strategy now uh, coming to the strategy making mode we have rational mode command mode symbolic mode transactive mode and generative mode this is how we are going to make our strategy so this is very important part of strategy planning this is called mintzberg five piece of strategy how we are going to make a particular strategy so number 1 is planning then we are going to ploy then we are going to see the pattern then we are going to see the position of the strategy and the perspective so these are the five p's we use to make strategy viable so let's discuss these five p's in detail strategy as a plan plan is planning is the most obvious step and seems to happen very well for every manager uh, it relies uh, when developing a business strategy following most helpful designing your plan whenever we are going to uh, plan a strategy we are going to consider the swot analysis that is strength weakness opportunity and threat and the pest analysis that is political economic socio cultural and technological and the brainstorming a session generating the multiple ideas and selecting the best Uh, second comes our strategy as a ploy ploy is usually a man in a competition or a game one that is taken to get the better of your competitor ploy takes advantage of opportunities that arise so whenever we are making a ploy we are going to uh, uh, follow these step like number 1 impact analysis and future view impact analysis is what a method for collecting the data and determining the effect of potential disruption of your business and future view a way structured brainstorming which creates a model about future based on the analysis of the effect of event and trends and problems so this is how a ploy the third one is the pattern third p is the pattern so in pattern we are going to see the strategic outcomes like what are the outcomes already established by other organizations or what are the patterns already uh, seen by our organization itself so or uh, following steps are helpful in designing the pattern number 1 is core competency analysis here a concept uh, it reveals the combination of skill and resources and usp unique selling proposition analysis uh, unique uh, uniqueness in the product or uniqueness of the company is required out here now when we talk about the strategy as a position so position is what like how we are going to locate or fit a business within the environment environment is what our external environment so for that particular purpose we are going to do the pest analysis the porter's diamond porter's five force analysis and so on and so forth so uh, here we have the last p that is the fifth p that is called perspective finally strategy can be defined in terms of corporate personality and culture a company developed over a period of time so strategy is a way a company views itself in the world like the uh, picture of a company in outside uh, frame uh, or the frame of the world and this can also refer to the organization culture so with this i think this is over if you are having any problems related to the introductory part then kindly contact thank you so much for your precious time if you are facing any difficulty regarding the topic kindly contact me